22. Hallelujah. So what is going to happen is 24, rather. What is going to happen to you, therefore, is that you study it. You study it from one book to another book so I can make a comparison. If you don't study, who else will study it? After all, Peter and John, they were unlearned. They were uneducated. Another translation says that they did not receive special training of the Bible. And then they performed miracles. Hallelujah. So I challenge people to study the word of God. So that's good, brother, 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 uh, next and sister said it. Well done. Happening is as a result of happening. Happy, happiness, rather, is as a result of happenings. But joy is not like that. If nothing happens, if you don't get healed after you have prayed, if you lost your job, despite the fact that you have prayed, you will still have joy. Because it's given to you the joy of the Spirit. Hallelujah. But then you will not be happy because you just lost your job. Amen. That's it. But God is not in the realm of just you being happy, taking your fancy. It's more than that. Because God has the better thing. He has gone ahead to prepare for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I just asked that one. <laughs> Time has gone. Brother and Sister Chris, okay, let me give you, you wanted to ask a question? Oh no, I just wanted to say that I could totally identify with my brother and sister over here because whenever I, and this is, goes for my husband John as well, whenever we have a delightful meeting, so the dear sister of us sitting in here and writing notes in probably Sainsbury's or in the high street or something, it's the joy of the Lord and it's Sister Nikki, your okay. lovely wife, to see God. her. Uh, you know, it's just that total joy because she's a child of God, we're children of God, and we know we've got each other. Right. And she's such a blessing and full of joy. That's how it's supposed to be, really. And, and, and I agree that Jesus had the word touched in his heart and he knew scripture so he could come against the end when he was in the desert. Yes. You know, in the wilderness, he knew his word of God and he come what he's written. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That is the way to capture, to overcome every trial. It is written. If you, if you don't know what has been written, how can you defend yourself? So that's why we study the scripture, it is written. And devil knows what is written. Because once you say it is written and you quote it right, because devil also believes. You know devil believes? He believes. The only thing he didn't do is to have faith in God so that he can be saved. You see? So you cannot just quote a scripture and just mumble jumble the devil knows if you say the right mm -hmm. so for you to allow the, the word of God to be effective in your life you will say it right mm -hmm. turn to someone and say, say it right mm -hmm. that's it mm -hmm. so I came across a scripture that shook my life and changed everything in my life and it's in Luke chapter 11 verse 35 Luke chapter 11 verse 35 Jesus Christ said, Therefore, take it that the light which is in you is not darkness. When I look at other translations like the New Living Translation, it says, Make sure that the light you think you have is not darkness. What that says in Adventively is that you may think you have light, not knowing that it is darkness. He said, make sure that the light you think is in you is not darkness. And you wonder how many Christians, how many people today that come to church think that they have light in them, but it's not really light. May your light not become dark. Amen. The fact still remains that God, through his love, sent his only son to the world to save us. God in Christ Jesus saved us through his death. He saved us from what sin? From sickness and from Satan and death. By so doing, he has made us his own special people. So that through us, other people can receive the light of God. Doesn't that make you special? 
And so we are in the mouth of the peculiar people. Peculiar because you are special people. Peculiar because God in Christ Jesus has made us special and peculiar. Let's look in 1 Peter chapter 2 from verses 6 to 10. 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 6 to 10. The scripture says, Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builder, the builders rejected, has become the chief cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. The stumble being disobedient to the world, to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation is all special people hallelujah Amen. that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light who once were not a people but are now the people of God hallelujah Amen. who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained Mercy. Hallelujah. Come on, give those, give those hands together for God. Hallelujah. Can you see the transition? People that were no longer, were not there before, but now you are there. He said, you were once not a people. You were nothing to be considered. You were nothing to be recognized. He said, but now the people of God. You who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. This is who you are and this is who you should be. This is your image. Don't let anyone change this image. This is your image. The image by which God is looking at you. We are going to talk about God's special people. God's special people. To be special is to be peculiar. To be peculiar is to be different from others. Verse 10 says, who was were not a people, but are now the people of God. Who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. I will tell you in a little while how to exercise those the mercy that God has given you. Hallelujah. But now things have changed. Your life has changed if you are in Christ Jesus. You are not the abused and deprived person that you used to be. You are not that woman. You are not that man. You are different. Look at that verse 2 of the same chapter. It says, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the world, that you may be able to grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. I have tasted that the Lord is gracious and I know many of you have tasted the, that the Lord is gracious. Now, what does God expect of us when you have tasted the grace of God? That you also be gracious to people. I cannot imagine some of us not having a forgiven spirit. He said, forgive then, he forgive us in Christ. Therefore, we too ought to forgive others. Hallelujah. So whatever Christ has done for us, we are to do it for others. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are God's special people, what are those choices that we often make or we need to make on a daily basis that will make us stand out? To be peculiar also means to stand out from the rest. You can stand out from other Christians. Many people say they are Christians, but from their life, you know that their food they are bearing is different. You can decide.
to stand out from among the rest. Number one, therefore, those things that you need to do to make you special and those things you must always guard to protect you from not being special is number one, your desire. What are your desires? God's special people, according to that verse 2 and 3, said as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the world that you may grow thereby. So that means, therefore, it means that God expects you and I to grow spiritually through the word of God. So number one, you must desire as God's special one to know the word of God and obey the word of God. Know the word of God and obey the word of God. In James chapter 1 verse 22, it says, But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. Hallelujah. Can we read that together? But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. So there are deceivers in the church. There are deceivers in the body of Christ. But he's saying to those people that want to stand out and make a difference that don't deceive yourself, don't deceive God, and don't deceive others. How? When you hear the word of God, do the word of God. God's special people will not deceive people. They will not deceive themselves. They will not deceive others. In the church, there are two types of people. Those who deceive themselves and those who are true. Those who are hearers only and those who are doers of the word. Which category do you fall into? God's special people. In every generation of people, God has always sought for a man that will be make it that, that, that will be different from others. God has always sought for a man that will become different from others. God's only special people. He uses special people that will call the bluff and then stand up for what is right. It doesn't matter whether people support you or people doesn't support you. Hallelujah. In Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30, Ezekiel 22 verse 30, the word of God says, God himself said, says, so I sought for a man among them who will make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. Hallelujah. There cannot be any significant revival in any land without a man putting his neck on the line. Somebody has to pay the price. Is it John Evans that paid the price for, for Wales revival? You see, somebody has to pay the price. I want to be that God's special people. God is looking for someone, someone who wants to be different from others. God wants you to be a world changer. You cannot change your family, let alone changing the world, unless you yourself, you are God's special people. There are examples of God's special people in the Bible. People that spent time alone with God. They don't need the pastor to be reminded them to spend time with God. They do it from the word of the pastor. They continue to do it. They don't need the pastor to be reminded them that they must have a family hotel fellowship. After all, it's for their own good. They study the Bible. They eat it just as that newborn babe desire the milk, the breast milk of the mother. So also every believer must desire the word of God. As the milk is, the breast milk is to the baby, newborn baby, so also to the believer, the word of God. Hallelujah. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 verse 13, Acts of Apostles chapter 4 verse 13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. I'm looking for people in this church that will move out from today, henceforth on the high street, and people will know that they have been with Jesus. That's what matters.
Matis. When I saw Sister Chris on the, on, on the high street many years back, I never knew her, but I prayed with her openly, and God healed her. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm looking for people that will say, after all, I have nothing to hide. I'm a child of God. I have no skeleton in my cupboard. Lord, I am available for you. And then God will use you. The New Living Translation of the same verse says, the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. Ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. You don't need to go to the Bible school before you can win a soul. If you are a believer, born of God, the word of God is in your heart, in your mouth. Hallelujah. The scripture says the word of God is ninety in your heart, in your mouth, the word we speak. Hallelujah. So they also recognize them as men who had been with Jesus. These men were ordinary men. These men were ordinary and they stood out from among others. You two can decide to be different from today. How? Through what you are hearing now. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. So desire to grow spiritually, desire to know the Bible, desire to obey God. Hallelujah. Make up your mind to stop lying, to stop cheating, to stop pretending. It's not helping. It will not help anyone. As the breast milk, as I've said, is to a newborn babe, is, so is the word of God to God's special people. What else will make you God's special people? Set your desire. Number two, your devotions. In other words, what drives you from the moment you wake up in the morning or in the night or any time you woke up from the bed? What, what is that thing that drives you? What are your devotions? Have you ever wondered in he wondered, what is my drive in life? It cannot be your job, because job comes and job goes. It cannot be something ephemeral, something that is temporal, something that is not lasting. It cannot be that. It has to be something that has to do with God. What is it that drives you every day? In that first Peter chapter 2, verse 7, Look at it. Therefore, to you who believe, it is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they were appointed. Those who are refusing to serve God, Jesus has become the stone builders rejected. And no building can ever stand without the chief cornerstone. So you wonder what you are building without Christ. You cannot build anything without Christ. People will try. It's all a futile effort. You cannot build without the foundation because the cornerstone is the foundation. So nothing can prosper in life without your service to God. Look at 1 Peter chapter 4, Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. 1 Timothy 4, 15. Meditate on these things. Meditate. Reflect upon. Think on the word of God that you are hearing. That is what will make you to be a doer of God's word. You will write them down. You see, being a Christian, I believe, is an opportunity to be taught by God, to receive the word of God directly from the throne of grace. And if God can ever speak to you, and if you can ever hear from God, and you have, if you have ever heard from God, that word that God has spoken will ever remain alive in you. In 1 Timothy 4, 15, he said, meditate on these things. Give yourselves, give yourself entirely 
to them that your progress may be evident to all. If it's not evident to you, it cannot be evident to all. If the faith does not hit you and is real to you, it cannot be real to others. If you don't name business with God, if you don't name business with God, he said there is no progress. There is no progress. He says so that your progress may be evident to all. So that means that whatever you are hearing from me now and have been projected on the YouTube, you will be tried. You will be tried. And then on that trial, on that trial day, I might not be there. Now it is what you are hearing from me now that will sustain you. And that's how, that is why it's important for you to open up your heart. The same Jesus that is the chief cornerstone is the offense for some people. The same Jesus that is the chief cornerstone for some people is the stumbling for some people. Don't let Jesus be the stumbling for you. Don't let Jesus be the offense for you. Many people are offended in the church today, offended at the truth. But Jesus is supposed to exonerate you, Jesus is supposed to free you, but rather, when you are not obeying God, when you are refusing willingly the word of God, the thing that's supposed to promote you will demote you. He said, meditate on these things. Give yourselves entirely to them. That should be your drive. And that is what is going to make you God's special people. David was an example of a devotee. Someone who devoted to godly service. And we have made reference to, references to him today in our Bible study. But this is another one that you should take note. Psalm 122, verse 1. Psalm 122, verse 1 said, I was glad when they said to me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. There's happiness, isn't it? When they say, Let us go to the house of the Lord. When it is Sunday, how does that make you feel? We are going to church today. Hallelujah. Why is it so exciting? It's because it's the house of God. The house of God is a place of blessing. The house of God is a place of reverence. The house of God is a place of jubilation. The house of God is a place of celebration. The house of God is not the house of bondage. That's why it's exciting. That when I come to the house of God, I know my prayer will be heard. I know I'm not coming to see the pastor. I'm coming for the Lord's sake. Is there somebody how will be? I'm coming for the Lord's sake. Hallelujah. I don't come frowning because I was forced to come. I don't come complaining because I don't really want to come. David said, I was glad. I was glad when they said to me. So it was not only him. We came as a party. I was glad we came as a family. I was glad you came with your husband and your wife. I was glad when they said to me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. God's special people are not only regular in the church, they are timely in the church because the angels are there. Don't let the angels come to church before you. Let the angels meet you with a blessing. Otherwise, when the angels come to church before you, they will give your blessing to somebody else. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Don't just be regular, be timely, give yourself. He said, give yourself entirely. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them. God is not looking for have hazard worship. God is not looking for people that are half-hearted. No, he's looking for whole-hearted, wholesome worship. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said, watch. With the same measure you give, you will receive. If you give to God, have asset. God will also give to you. What? That's it. Praise God. God's special people. Verse 2. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Verse 3. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. God's special people are not low rangers. God's special people come together. God's special people are church builders. God's special people join forces together to build the church. Hallelujah. Amen. What is your devotion? What is it that drives you? Is it money? Money put on wings and then fly away. And fly away. So that's me. It's 
not reliable. Even the rich cry. It's not reliable. But the only thing that is constant is what? God. And what you do for God. Somebody said life is so short. Death is so certain. It's only what you and I do for God that remains. On that day, before the throne of judgment, what will remain for you? That is the question. That is the question. Verse 8 of that Psalm 122. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say, Peace be within you. Verse 9. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. David knew that the house of God is a place of blessing. And so David invested himself in the house of God. What are you doing for the Lord? What is it that you are devoted to doing for God? Because when the books are open, I know what is written in the book of remembrance for me. Because that's what I've been doing for over 30 years. What is it that, will, that is written for you? Yours, yours might just be a newborn babe. It doesn't mean, it doesn't matter. Overtaking is allowed in the kingdom of God. So it's what you do that matters. It's what you do that matters to God. It's what you do that matters to God. God's special people. They are devoted to building the lives of others in the church. They are part of the church. They used to be visitors. They came as visitors. But they are now part of the church. Committed members of the church and citizens of his kingdom. God's special people. Lastly, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. Hmm. Now is the time that you are hearing me. Don't harden your heart. God's special people their drive is to work for God and work with God. In the church, they have roles. They enjoy doing it. That's why they come early. Because they don't want their place, their position to be taken over. I've never served God with reluctance. No. And I've never served God with hesitance. I always love to do the things of God. I'm talking to you. What is it that drives you? You must be driven by your godly service that you offer to God. Are you God special? Let us pray. Please pray that this month you will become God special. You've heard the message about what are the things that makes you to stand out at God's special people. Your desire, desire to grow spiritually, desire to study the word of God, desire to study on your own, desire to ask questions from the Bible. And as we are doing this, it's the same way the newborn babe desire to grow by feeding on the breast milk of his or mother. As the breast milk is to that newborn babe, so is the word of God to that person that wants to be God's special person. And I said, your drive, your devotion. David was glad when they said, let us go to the house of God because he knew that this is time of blessing. It's what I begin to do for God, to build the church of God. To bring people from outside, bring them into the same place that have been fed the word of God, that counts to God. Because if you make the life of other people better, God will make your own life better. This is the question. Is there anyone there that want to be God's special people? Is there anyone that want to 
receive the mercy of God. You want to translate from, you want, you want to make that transition from the people, from someone that was not a people, but now a people of God. From someone who have not received mercy, but now have obtained mercy. This is God's word. His word is now on the line. Let's prove it. Is there somebody out there that wants to give his or her life to Christ and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I have no mercy before, but now I found out the mercy of God. I want to taste this grace of God. He said, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk, the pure milk of the world, that you may be able to grow. You may grow thereby. God expects you to grow better this year than what you used to be donkey years ago. If you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Is anybody here that have tasted or want to taste that the Lord? You want to taste the grace of God. You want to taste the grace of God in Christ Jesus. Is anybody here that wants to give his or her heart to God? I say, Lord, from today, I want, to, I, want, I want to surrender everything to you. I'm a sinner, but now, Lord, I've come to hear your word. Please forgive me. Is there anybody that wants to die to self from now on? Is there anybody that wants to receive the generosity of God, the, the, the life that God has given us? He said, the, the, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God the gift of God in Christ Jesus is life, eternal life. Is there anybody here, out there, that want to receive the gift of God? If there's anybody there that want to receive the gift from God, if there's anybody there that want to stop lying, stop sinning, stop pretending, stop being hypocritical, stop, being, stop, stop, stop pretending, if there's anybody there that want to stop being a sinner and want to start living right from God, why don't you ask God to come into your heart? Ask God right now, I'm sorry. Begin to talk to God. I am sorry for my sin. I'm sorry. Maybe you have been a Christian, a believer before, but you have slept into sin. You have, sl you have slipped back into sin. God is asking you, calling you back right now. Just as the prodigal son came back home. Hear the word of God. Do not take the grace of God for granted because the grace is not forever. Do not take this grace for granted. Do not frustrate the grace of God. I need to stand up and say, God, help me. I want to give my heart to Jesus. I want to be saved. I want to forgive me. Please forgive me. I like what I'm hearing. I want to continue in it. I want to grow in your word. I want to live a sinless life. Lord, help me, oh God. Is there anybody out there that is praying this prayer? Ask God to forgive you. And I open up your heart to God. and say, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. Please forgive me. Come into my heart right now. Give me that eternal life in Christ. Give it to me, Lord. And give me that life that will make me to be free from sin, free from sickness, free from death, free from Satan. Are you praying? If you are praying, God is hearing. I'm not asking you to stand up right now, but in your heart, you can stand up for God. Let God see you. Say, do not be here as a rule. Deceiving yourself or be doers of the word. This first Sunday of the month, why don't you make it up with God? Say, Lord, please accept me. I'm sorry for what I've done. I write my name down in the book of life. Are you praying? Pray. Pray. God will give you another chance. God will give you another chance. We have done that. Let's just begin to thank him. He has had all we do meet again. And again, and again. He's the same yesterday as his always has been. Yesterday and today. And forever we sing, there's no reason to fear, for we do it again. So Father, we thank you for the entrance of your world give light and understanding to the simple. He said, if anyone should come unto you, you will know why it's cast away. Lord, we have sinned, we have fallen short of God's glory. 
But now we have heard the word. The word of God. He said, receive with meekness the planted word of God that is able to save your soul. Lord Jesus, for as many that have received with meekness the word of God that has been planted into their hearts and has given them a new heart, I pray, O oh God, that the entrance of God's word into your heart will give you light. And that light will give you understanding in the name of Jesus. May your light not become darkness in the name of Jesus. Lord, I commit them into your hand. In this new month, in the second half of this year, Lord, I pray, remove every stumbling out of them. Remove every rock of offense out of their path. Jesus, we believe in you. Be our chief cornerstone. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord bless you.